Hello everyone and welcome back to Genie Crafts. In today's video, we are going to see a very unique kind of paper cut portrait, a transformation portrait, in which the portrait changes depending upon the direction from which you are looking. So this portrait consists of two different paper cut portraits. When you see from left angle, you will see a different portrait. When you see from right angle, you will see a different portrait. This portrait is based on the principle of lenticular art and I have utilized the same methodology to convert a regular paper cut portraits into a combined transformation portrait. This is going to be a slightly long video. So guys, let's get started. As usual, the first thing you will require is a template. Now this template consists of two steps. In the first step, you need to create regular paper cut portrait templates by the same process as I've explained in many previous videos. And then using Microsoft PowerPoint, I have overlaid these lines on top of these portraits also along with the border. Now the final template will have multiple parts to it. You will see uh, two different colored lines which are dividing the entire portrait into different strips. One slightly grayish line and in between that grayish line at the center of it there will be a single black line. So the grayish area that you see is the uh, buffer area. You are not supposed to cut into that area that's to keep the strips intact and uh, the vertical lines that you see are where you are actually going to cut the strips to divide this entire portrait into multiple strips also you will see that i have created a complete black border around each portrait this is to ensure buffer area at the top and bottom to handle the strips carefully so the first thing that you will need to do is to number these strips in the sequence so that you do not forget or you do not mix up the sequence of the strips because finally you will need to arrange these strips onto the lenticular format to create this transformation portrait effect now the next important question is will I be cutting the black portions or will I be cutting the white portions? So it is quite simple in this. The background for the transformation portrait is going to be black. So we'll be cutting out all the black areas from the template. That means you have to ensure that there are no isolated white portion in each strip. For all intents and purposes, for a given strip, the white portion you are not supposed to cut and the side gray lines also you are not supposed to cut so treat the gray lines as uh, white portions only so if you want to connect an isolated white area you can simply uh, connect it to a nearby white area with the help of a white gel pen or you can connect it to uh, the uh, grayish border which will also act as a white area for you for the purposes of paper cutting also uh, i'll be doing this cutting on top of a 140 gsm paper uh, use a slightly thicker paper greater than 100 gsm for sure because uh, the strips become very fragile once you are done paper cutting with it and you have separated the strips so you need a slightly thicker paper to provide you uh, a better uh, you know handling capacity of those strip otherwise if you do it on a thin paper then the chances are that the strips are going to uh, break which we don't want now i have taken this printout on a a3 size paper and it is my recommendation to not do it below A3 size. I tried doing it on A4 also and you have seen that Iron Man transformation portrait I posted earlier on my Instagram page. So, uh, but A4 size is does not provide the same effect as an A3 size will. So that's why I did this particular portrait on A3 size because it gives more surface area for you to work on. Now when I overlaid these vertical strips in the Microsoft PowerPoint uh, application, I also left slight buffer area at the top and the bottom of the template. This is to paste the template onto my 140 GSM paper so that uh, I can keep the strips attached to this craft paper until I'm ready to paste them onto the background. So at the end, I'll just get rid of this buffer area and simply cut it and paste it onto the background. So when you are designing your final template in PowerPoint, ensure that you have kept this buffer area. Now that we have our template ready to cut, we are not just yet going to start doing the paper cutting on this template first we are going to divide this entire portrait into multiple strips and for that purpose only we have numbered it in the beginning so that we know the sequence of the strips so ensure that you have numbered the strips before you start cutting it now for cutting if you have noticed 
at the beginning between the gray lines or at the center of the gray line there is a thin black line which is your cutting marker that means you need to cut the strips at that line itself you have to ensure that all the strips are of the same width now the way i have created the template or overlaid these lines in the microsoft powerpoint is that i have kept a distance of one centimeter between each strip so each strip is one centimeter wide and the same width i am going to utilize to create the background also on which i will be pasting these strips i will create a separate video on how to do all this in microsoft powerpoint it's fairly straightforward but i'll still create a separate video on it so when you are cutting these strips please ensure that you do not deviate from these vertical lines because these vertical lines ensure that the width of the strip is one centimeter or it's the same it can be of any width but for my template i have created one centimeter width uh, strips so cut very carefully take your time do not hurry up because these strips are thin and if you hurry up you might damage the strips which we do not want now comes the actual paper cutting and this is going to be tricky because all you need to do now is to remove all the black portions from each strip which is easier said than done because the strips are so thin the buffer area is so thin so few tips when you are doing the paper cutting on these strips is first of all if there is any black portion which is attached to the buffer area first cut the vertical line along the buffer area do not keep it for last start with the vertical lines attached to the buffer area also do not end your cutting towards the buffer area start your cutting from the buffer area vertical line so that you do not accidentally overcut and damage the buffer line because if you damage the buffer line then the chances are that your strip might completely break down depending upon the kind of area that you need to cut nearby the buffer vertical line so be very 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 careful you'll have to be extremely patient because you cannot hurry in this also another tip that i can give you while doing this paper cutting is to keep a finger towards the left and right side of where you are doing the cutting it's not completely necessary depending upon how much stress the strip is getting you can decide where to keep your finger but mostly try to keep a finger towards the left and right of where you are doing the cutting so that you can hold the strip in place because the strip will be very fragile and it will keep on moving because the template is just attached at the top and the bottom it's not attached anywhere in the middle so you'll have to ensure that both the template and the craft paper are in the same place before you start doing the cutting so that you do not do a misplaced paper cutting do not pull any piece do not try to force out any cut out piece just recut it if you feel that it is still attached to the template so follow these simple simple tips uh, be very careful when you're doing the cutting and prepare each strips like this and you have to follow the same process for all the strips so you will complete the first part of this portrait paper cutting by creating those strips and doing paper cutting on them and the second part is preparation of the background so for that i have already taken a printout of a blank layout without any portrait stencil behind it so just the lines now since there are two portraits and uh, in my portrait there were around 33 strips for each of the portrait so the background the length of the background the horizontal length of the background will need to be 66 strips wide because you need 33 for one to see from one direction and 33 strips for the other portrait to see from other direction so what i'll be doing is uh, creating those fans paper fans that we used to create in the childhood by folding the paper uh, and then you know pressing it together to get give it the fan effect the same thing we'll be doing with this black background paper also now the paper that you need to choose for the background needs to be at least 200 to 220 gsm thick do not go beyond that because otherwise light will permeate from behind and it might ruin the effect of one portrait by the uh, lights coming through the cutout areas of the second portrait so we don't want that so 
what you see me doing right now on the screen is just marking the positions of the strip with the help of a pointed tool you can use a compass you can use a needle i'm using my metallic pencil to do it do this and i'll be creating scoring lines using these points later on so you will need to mark points for 66 strips plus certain extra area on the left and the right of this uh, you know uh, length this extra area is needed just in case we need to paste it on a background paper and etc so this is one part of the background once we have created this fan like structure with triangular folds then we'll be pasting this entire structure on top of another black paper to give it a little bit more sturdiness so complete these markings for uh, 66 strips so you can use the same templates to mark it twice so complete these markings and then we'll proceed to the next step Once you have created those marking, the next step is to create the scoring lines. So there are two lines that I have created, one horizontal lines at the top and the bottom, depending upon my final frame size. So I already had a frame in place. I measured the total uh, height of this entire background paper it is to be, and I created top and bottom lines. And once I had done, th done that, I started creating those vertical lines which will represent the strips or where the folds need to be made on this black paper. So create all the scoring lines just like you do in a low poly paper model. And once you have the scoring lines, the next step is to fold it along those lines and create the paper fan. So here we are after we have created all the scoring lines and I have cut out depending upon the size of my frame. Right now the entire width of this paper is twice that of my frame width but once I have created this fan like structure then after that the width is going to reduce because it will just become half of the actual width. So it's important that you have the right measurements in place and creating that fan is very easy. Once you fold inwards, the next you fold outwards, just like the paper fans we used to create in the childhood. And a lot of kids nowadays create in school projects also. So you just need to create fan like this. Now this is a slightly thicker paper, so it will be a little bit difficult for you and it will take a little effort to create that fan, final fan but uh, you'll have to do it otherwise uh, uh, you will not be able to paste those strips for two different direction viewing so ensure that when you're creating the fans you are folding on the right line only you're not folding anywhere because after this paper fan is created the height of each fold is to be exactly the same ideally yes but i'm pretty sure that some of the folds will have lower height other folds will have more height but it's okay if there is a slight difference here and there it's not going to create that much of a problem but if there is a noticeable difference in any of the folds one fold is very lower than the rest of the folds then in the final viewing of the, of the transformation portrait it is definitely going to show that problem in the middle wherever the fold height is very less so be very careful when you are folding Also because the paper is thick so you will keep noticing that the paper will keep opening again and again the folds will not remain in place. So for that what you need to do is that using some paper clips you need to keep the folds in place at least overnight. So try to fold slowly slowly and what you need to do is that once you start folding it once you have created all the folds and once you start compressing these folds together you need to uh, keep applying paper clips by uh, you know combining some of the folds together and clipping them with the help of a paper clip so this will keep the folds in place you can utilize any method that you want whatever you are comfortable with but because since the paper is thick you will need to leave this entire thing completely collapsed overnight completely compressed overnight so that once you release the clips next day the folds will remain in place it's important that the folds will remain in place folds should remain in place because uh, we need to reduce the twice the width of this entire paper fan to the width of your frame which will be half of that 
hence it is important that the fold should remain in place and for that you will need to leave them folded and compressed overnight so as you can see that i have applied paper clips and then i had actually left it overnight and then started working on it the next day So here we are after leaving the paper compressed overnight and you can also see another black paper on my paper cutting mat which is of the exact same dimensions as that of my frame and I'll be pasting this fan on top of this background black paper to give it more sturdiness. So also you see a slightly uh, extra area on the left and right side of the paper fan this is to uh, actually just paste this paper fan on top of this uh, area. Now expand this paper fan that you have created and you know uh, carefully paste on the left and right hand side to ensure that all the folds are evenly spaced even if they are not completely evenly spaced spaced it's okay a little bit of hair and tear is fine but try to ensure that all the folds are more or less evenly spaced to make the structure more sturdy uh, you can also apply lines of glue underneath the folds and you know then press the folds gently so that they stick to the background you don't need to apply the glue on the entire surface just put some lines of uh, glue under the folds and then put some weight on top of it and leave it for some time so that these folds are properly stuck to the background Now comes the most critical part of your transformation portrait, the final assembly of the strips onto the background. Now every fold will have two faces to it, the left side and the right side. So the strips of one portrait are going to go on the left side of each fold and the strip of other portrait are going to go on the right side of each portrait. So all you need to do is to cut out the buffer portions on the top and bottom of each strip and then with the help of a clear glue or PVA glue whatever you are comfortable with you start sticking those strips at the same height on each face ensure that the strips are aligned properly so you can first apply the glue on only one side and then stick the strips so I tried multiple methods and you will see me trying different methods in this video also the first time when I had tried to glue those strips when I made that Iron Man transformation portrait then at that time I tried to apply glue on the entire strip and then try to paste it which is a bad idea because the strips are very fragile and when you apply the glue they become even more fragile. Then next I tried to apply the glue at the bottom portion first stick the strip onto the uh, surface of the fold and then try to apply glue at different places in between completely finish with one strip and then move on to the other strip which is a good idea you can follow that but I thought that the best idea was to simply paste all the strips at either the top or the bottom wherever there is enough space and proper space to apply the glue so that way I had all the strips in place first and properly stuck to the background and then with the help of a toothpick or with the help of your fingers apply the glue on all the middle places here and there you do not need to apply the glue on the entire strip and then at the top of the strip or bottom of the strip and completely uh, you know uh, finish with each strips in sequence so I found this last method to be the best one because it was much easier to do it that way but it's completely up to you what method you want to follow but definitely do not apply the glue on the entire back of the entire strip first and then try to paste it because that is going to definitely end up in disaster so uh, apply glue on one side stick it and once it is dried off then try to apply glue on rest of the strip also
since there are so many strips and so much glue involved in the assembly of uh, this transformation portrait chances are very high that you will smudge uh, the template here and there so be careful keep a, a wet cloth handy to keep your fingers clean uh, but do not wet the strips because like i said the strips are very fragile and they will break with even the you know slightest of stress so try to ensure that the strips are not getting wet or they are not getting even more fragile than they are and this is what i was talking earlier as you can see that i am just uh, sticking the strips at the bottom first and not applying glue anywhere else and once i have completed or assembled all the strips on one end then i started applying glue on you know uh, the rest of the strip and then started pasting it uh, to the uh, face of the fold also you do not need to apply the glue on the entire strip even by following this process wherever there are cuts wherever there are free edges uh, hanging out from the strips definitely apply the glue there the entire purpose is just to ensure that there are no folds in the strip uh, when you hold the portrait in your hand and the strips are completely flush against the surface of the folds and we are done with one side of the transformation portrait and you have to follow the exact same process for the other side also if you tilt your background paper at a certain angle that is viewing from the left hand side then you will see the actual portrait if you view it from the front you won't see any portrait you will see just a mishmash of paper cuts but when you see it from an angle you are definitely going to see a portrait similarly on the other side of the folds paste the strips of the second portrait that you have already prepared and paste it and get the entire transformation portrait and finally the last step that we need to frame it so for that i am using this uh, shadow box frame from ikea it has a depth of almost 1 1 and 1/2 cm and you will require it because the folds itself will have a height of almost a little higher than sorry a little less than 1 cm so you will require a little uh, depth frame rather than your regular frame place the frame glass at the front of the frame that is at the very front most of the frame and remove the lamination from the inside for now i had kept the lamination on the outside because i intend to sell it or give it to someone so i have not removed that lamination remove the lamination from the inside place the frame at the uh, place that glass at the front of the frame and then put your transformation portrait upside down finally put the back lid and close it and your transformation portrait is ready now you, all you need to do is to view it from different angles and you will see two different portraits so i hope you guys like this intro tutorial on how to make transformation lenticular portraits I intend to make few more videos on different kind of portraits that you can make with the help of this lenticular theme or uh, you know you can uh, or or I will also you know try to make three portraits in a single frame I have still not decided how to do it but if I figure it out I'll definitely share with you guys So I hope you guys like this video if you guys found this video useful please don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with as many of your friends as you can Also please do subscribe to my channel for regular videos on paper arts and string arts and I will see you guys very soon in my next video till then stay safe take care and bye bye